America's elected representatives are reacting in a variety of ways in response to Kevin McCarthy's declaration that President Biden would face a formal impeachment inquiry. Many Republicans are groaning because they think this puts pressure on them politically. Many Democrats are reacting with disappointment because they believe that there's no basis for the inquiry. And then there's Democratic Senator John Fetterman, an unconventional politician by any stretch of the imagination. And his reaction was very different still. But before we unpack all that, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. Maybe check out my Patreon. I'd appreciate the support. All right, folks. So John Fetterman um, was elected... Uh, last year, during the midterms, he squared off against uh, disgraced TV celebrity Dr. Oz, and um, he is, by all accounts, an unconventional politician. I believe he was the former lieutenant governor of Pennsylvania. Um, he is a, a hulking man. He is known. I mean, he has tattoos. He's known for dressing unconventionally, wearing shorts, and you know, dre- dressing like somebody reflective of the people he represents, of reflective of Middle America. He's not always dressed in suits and ties, etc., and so forth. And his reaction to Kevin McCarthy threatening and then going ahead and announcing a formal impeachment inquiry into President Biden, um, the leader of his own party, is very different from how other politicians have reacted. So I want to play a couple of clips, and we will unpack it all together. I'm asking about this news that uh, Speaker McCarthy has formally launched an impeachment inquiry, has said he's going to Oh my God, really? Oh my gosh, you know, oh, it's devastating. (laughs) Ooh, don't do it. Please don't do it. Oh no, oh no. Um, yeah, he doesn't seem particularly afraid. And then he was asked about it again. You basically dared House Republicans to launch this impeachment inquiry. Now they have. Do you regret it? No, please don't do it. It, It's just like those dangerous men over there, you know, the the cheap thrills and everything. I I don't know. It's just to me, it's it's just like if they got to do it, they got to do it. You know, are you a political loser? Are you confident? You basically. So he says it's a political loser. He reaffirms his uh, disdain and his lack of fear for this impeachment inquiry, and we'll unpack it. But I also want to get the reaction of uh, another Democrat in a different chamber. So John Fetterman is a Democrat in the Senate. Uh, This is a reaction from Democratic congressperson, somebody in the House of Representatives, Jamie Raskin, also one of my favorites. Uh, He's basically asked about Fetterman's um, provocative stance and his uh, disdain for Kevin McCarthy's posturing. And this is what uh, Jamie Raskin has to say. Let me let me play you what um, John Fetterman had to say a little bit more of what he said about impeachment. It would be a politically common for Republicans. Yeah, that's the thing. Your man, your man has what three or four indictments now, and, and you're gonna so like, like I said, you know, like sometimes you just gotta you know, call their call their bullshit. If they're gonna threat then that's it, it, it is when you have a president who's been indicted not once, not twice, not three times, but four times, he has been found liable for sexual abuse and has two impeachments. To me, it sounds like they are just inviting Democrats to start talking about that stuff, as John Fetterman said. Is that what's going to happen in the House? Well, you know that I'm the ranking Democrat on the Oversight Committee against Mr. Comer. And I can't tell you the number of Democrats who've come up to me today to say, let them do the impeachment. It will be the end of the Republican Party. It will end up in complete defeat and humiliation for them. Of course, I've got a little bit too much respect and love for the Constitution just to let them go down that road with at least pointing out that the constitutional standard is treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors, and they don't have the evidence of any wrongdoing at all <laughs> of Joe Biden, and that's, that's not... So he goes on, this is a really good interview with uh, Joy Reid and Congressman uh, Jamie Raskin, but yeah, so according to Jamie Raskin, there are many, many, many Democrats saying, just let him go ahead and do it, because this is politically toxic for the GOP. Now, Raskin is an excellent debater. He was a constitutional scholar, a, a gifted attorney. He was one of the impeachment managers for one of Donald Trump's impeachments. I can't remember if it was the Ukraine impeachment or the January 6th impeachment, but he's an accomplished and incisive debater, and he's the ranking 
member, as he said, on the House Oversight Committee, which will be leading the impeachment inquiry. So he is in a unique position to offer like a, a counterweight, a countervailing force to the Republican Party's agenda. Now, Dan Pfeiffer of Pod Save America, a former uh, Obama uh, administration uh, staffer. I think he was one of the speech writers. He has a really good article on the message box on his Substack, in which he lays out the case that this is, again, going to be very politically divisive for um, uh, the Republican Party. And it's stuff that we've discussed before, but he kind of collates it all together in a really persuasive way. But the fact of the matter is this. The polling is clear. The vast majority of Americans do not support an impeachment inquiry. They do not support an impeachment. They don't think the evidence is there. They think that this is a politically motivated partisan witch hunt solely about hurting President Biden heading into a 2024 election season, as well as getting retribution uh, for Donald Trump's various indictments. And based on the evidence, that's exactly what it is. Now, the scary thing for Kevin McCarthy is, and I say for Kevin McCarthy because, of course, I don't care one way or another necessarily— is that so we're going into a government a potential government shutdown with increasing probability as the days pass i think we've got like two maybe three weeks before the government officially runs out of money and we hit a shutdown now he wants to avoid that i think for various reasons because not the least of which is the fact that republicans have a record in modern history of triggering government shutdowns they are far more likely to do it than the democratic party and in most of those situations they accrue a political consequence for it. The American people rightly blames them for trying to extort a Democratic president. They did it under President Clinton. They did it under President Obama. And now apparently they're going to do it under President Biden. Kevin McCarthy has to be mindful of those considerations while also trying to manage this far-right Freedom Caucus. That far-right Freedom Caucus will not approve government funding unless President Biden is either – well, I, not even an impeachment query I think will, will be sufficient to mollify them – but impeached. There has to be a formal impeachment vote, according to many of them, as well as the fact that the government funding has to shut down funding for uh, special counsel Jack Smith. So there are these ridiculous demands that Democrats will never agree to and President Biden will never allow. But there may be this may be an attempt at by Kevin McCarthy to, you know, try to appease his far right flank. But it's not going to work because at the end of an impeachment inquiry, they are almost certainly going to have to proceed with an impeachment vote. Otherwise, you put the American people through all this and then you don't proceed with a vote. I imagine that would also accrue political consequences, right? Like they're all in at this point. There's no guarantee that they would get the vote for an impeachment, even if they do, to save face. It will die an ugly death in the Senate. But beyond that, even if there's a government shutdown, it's ultimately Kevin McCarthy with respect to uh, the House of Representatives and Congress in general. If there's a government shutdown... Um, those functions which are deemed essential <clears throat> because the government isn't completely shut down. Certain essential functions continue. And with respect to the legislative branch, those functions and those committees, those efforts which are deemed essential are deemed by the Speaker of the House, which is Kevin McCarthy. So he has no leverage here because the Freedom Caucus can say, okay, well, if we have a government shutdown, um, the impeachment inquiry, we're not going to vote to uh, stop a government shutdown because if the government shutdowns, you can simply declare that the impeachment inquiry into the president counts as an essential function and continues to receive government funds. So he has no leverage here. Anyway, I think it's really interesting when you consider that John Fetterman is, again, taking a, rare, a very irreverent um, devil-may-care approach when he's saying, listen, Kevin McCarthy screwed on this. The Republican Party, according to polling and history, screwed on this. Um, I understand where Jamie Raskin's coming from. He's not going to take nearly as irreverent an approach rhetorically, but he's probably got to be thinking the same thing that, you know, an increasing number of Democrats are saying, let them do it. Let them hoist themselves by their own batard. Uh, I don't know where I fall on that issue. I do agree that it's going to be the signs indicate that it would be politically harmful to the Republicans. I don't know if I'm quite so irreverent because, you know, especially in this media cycle and with an American people who can be so capricious in terms of their political views and the effective propaganda machine that the Republican Party has in terms of Fox News and, you know, Ben Shapiro, The Daily Wire, all of the alternate media, as well as the fact that there's a very lazy and sensationalist mainstream media. I don't I can't say that this won't have a blowback effect that could work against the president and Democrats, but I do think the signs indicate that it's more likely to hurt the GOP than to help.